the newest threats faced by women journalists and media workers, along with their female sources, exist in the digital realm, particularly on social media sites. These risks range from pernicious gendered online harassment to overt targeted attacks that frequently involve threats of sexual violence. Increasingly, they also include digital security breaches from the exposure of identifying information exacerbating the offline risks to malicious representation using artificial intelligence technologies. The expectation that journalists be actively embedded on social platforms like Facebook and Twitter to facilitate the direct audience engagement that's now integral to journalistic research, production and content dissemination has placed women media workers on the front line of a massive problem. In addition to threats of sexualised violence, including rape and murder, the pile-on effect of organic or robotic attacks against a person online worsens the impacts of this harassment experienced by women journalists, along with their female audiences and sources, of course. This problem is chilling the media freedom rights of women, exposing them to increasing physical safety risks, causing serious psychological injury and impacting on the functionality of newsrooms, pushing some women offline, as I mentioned, or behind pseudonyms, and, as I said, driving some women out of journalism altogether. In 2016, the OSCE published research that demonstrated the international impact of online abuse of female journalists, whom it described as being disproportionately targeted for hate trolling. The study found that female journalists, bloggers and other media actors are disproportionately experiencing gender-related threats, harassment and intimidation on the internet, which has a direct impact on their safety and their future online activities. One respondent told the researchers, quote, I was raped in the imaginations of many men and in so many different ways, and they've expressed their interest in doing that to me in person. Also, they've promised to do the same to my mother. This theme, threats of sexualised violence against women reporters being extended to their family members, in particular mothers and daughters, was repeated in several of the interviews conducted for the study, and it's emerged in subsequent research as well. The intimate nature of these attacks, often received on personal devices first thing in the morning and last thing at night, further sharpens the impact. There are days when I wake up to verbal violence and fall asleep with sexist and racist rage echoing in my ears. It's like a low, intense, constant warfare. Those are the words of celebrated Swedish journalist Alexandra Pascalidou, who testified in 2016 before a European Commission session in Brussels about her online experiences. She said, I've been called a bloody gypsy, a Jewish, Muslim slut, a Greek parasite, a disgusting migrant, a stupid psycho, an ugly liar, a biased hater. They keep telling me to go home and kill myself or they'll shoot me and cut my tongue off and break my fingers one by one. They keep threatening me with gang rape and sexual torture. Another hallmark of this online abuse by women media workers and others producing verifiable information in the public interest is the use of disinformation tactics. Lies are spread about their character or their work as a means of undermining their credibility, humiliating them, and seeking to chill their public commentary and reporting. In some instances, journalists have been targeted in acts of astroturfing and trolling, experienced as deliberate attempts to, quote, mislead, misinform, befuddle, or endanger journalists. In other cases, they face cyber attacks designed to reveal their sources, to breach their privacy, or to expose them to risk, to access their unpublished data. And this can happen through what's known as phishing, doxing, malware attacks, and identity spoofing. More recently, computational propaganda has increased the risks for journalists dealing with astroturfing and trolling. This involves the use of bots to disseminate well-targeted false information and propaganda messages, on a scale that's designed to look like an organic movement. Frequently, these attacks involve gendered elements and threats of sexual violence. Concurrently, artificial intelligence technology is being leveraged to create what are known as deep fake porn videos, 
and other content designed to discredit women journalists. One example comes from the Philippines with the targeting of the independent news site Rappler.com and its largely female staff in a campaign of prolific online abuse that began in 2016. Rappler's CEO and executive editor Maria Ressa was subjected to prolific, unrelenting sexualised harassment and she's become an international leader in the fight back against the problem. Another example comes from South Africa where a wealthy family accused of capturing key state enterprises and politicians hired a UK public relations firm Bell Pottinger to devise an elaborate propaganda campaign. It spread its messages via a fake news empire involving websites and a paid Twitter army which targeted journalists and business people and politicians with abusive and hostile messages and photoshopped images designed to humiliate and discredit. Prominent editor Ferial Hafaji was targeted in a campaign of online harassment during this period, which saw her image manipulated to create false impressions of her character, alongside deployment of the hashtag prostitute. In India, the case of journalist Rana Ayub elicited a call in 2018 from five United Nations special rapporteurs for the Indian government to provide protection following the mass circulation of false information online that was designed to counter her critical reporting. The independent journalist was on the receiving end of disinformation about her on social media, including deep fake videos, as well as direct rape and death threats. The UN experts cited the murder of Indian journalist Gauri Lankesh that I mentioned earlier, following death threats in September 2017, and called on India to act to protect Ayub, saying, we're highly concerned that the life of Rana Ayub is at serious risk following these graphic and disturbing threats. Finally, there's the example of Finnish investigative journalist Jessica Aro. She's the ongoing target of troll factories in a campaign she says began in 2014. She's experienced disinformation attacks along with digital safety threats, including spoofing and doxing. She says that Russian propagandists started spreading fake information about her in what she calls Russian information spaces. She said, I was framed as some kind of foreign spy or agent. My contact information was put online along with that disinformation. And this is the worst problem. Some people actually believed it and they contacted me and they called me and they sent me nasty text messages and threatening phone calls, she told the BBC. So we already know that there's widespread harassment and abuse of women who are in the public eye, who are feminists, or who speak out publicly against sexism. And as more media outlets are developing their online presence, it becomes easier for abusers to target journalists, and social media posts are now an extremely popular way of abusing women, not just those women who are writing as journalists, but also their female sources, bloggers, and ordinary citizens involved in the co-creation or distribution of content on news websites and on platforms like Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. Indeed, anywhere online where women are speaking. The level and extent of such abuse has a specific impact on other women who witness such experiences, causing many to refrain from using their own voices for fear of similar responses. Where women journalists are particularly targeted is when they're working on news beats which have been traditionally the domain of men, especially stereotypically masculine areas such as sport or economics or politics. Additionally, women reporting or commentating on gender rights or the work at the intersection of other lightning rod issues like race and migration are ferociously targeted. This intersectional experience is of course experienced even more acutely by women of colour or minority religions and cultures. When it's a woman journalist or a woman whose name is out there, the threats against them are likely to be around sexually based violence or, or you know, death threats or rape threats. You know, it's not just sort of attacking them for their views on a specific topic, but it goes directly to their gender and their persons. And I think, I mean, we all know that has magnified on an unbelievable scale and the and the threats and the words and, and everything that's being used is, is wholly unacceptable but we get back to this point about how do you regulate the internet how do you actually stop these things from happening but I do think that um, this is probably one of the worst issues right now and is putting a lot of women off entering the business